I'm getting ready to try to dismount the law. Webinars. My name is Meeta and I will be your host for today. Thank you for joining us for Strategic Planning for Project Managers webinar. Uh, before we start, I ask that you please type your questions in the chat window throughout the presentation. Our presenter and our panelists will answer them at the end of the presentation. The session today is conducted by Project Management Evangelist and the CEO of PQC International, Frank Payne. Frank has over 20 years of field-tested experience from corporations and has served as a U.S. Army combat commander. He's a known authority on project management and is passionate about sharing his thought leadership in this discipline. It helps that he has billions of dollars worth of hands-on experience on hundreds of projects across diverse growth, growth platforms in more than eight countries. So I'd like to thank you once again for attending this webinar and would like to turn it to our speaker for the day, Frank Payne. Hey everybody having a good lunch. And welcome to the webinar today as Mita has shared. I'm going to continue my thought pattern in my webinar series focusing on project managers converting themselves to loose CEOs. Today we're going to talk about a topic that normally project managers not speak about. We're going to talk about a topic that is very relevant to project managers in the industry and the world we live in today. We talk about strategic planning for project managers. I'm going to walk you through some things because there are some setups and some changes that need to be made in how you are currently managing your business as a project manager. We're going to talk about some pitfalls that you can watch out for as a project manager as you begin to focus on strategic planning. I will dive into what I call three perspectives because you need to understand the perspectives that deal with project management. After we do that, you know, implementation is a key process here. So how do I make this work, though? So talk about that. I'll wrap it up with the five phases to develop a strategy. Because your strategy is going to be your key foundation as to how you're driving what you're doing. So we're going to talk about this subject. So what is what are the ten reasons that you need to focus on strategic planning? Let's have a little conversation about this. The first thing is you recognize any organizations to find growth opportunity and seek competitive force. So strategic planning is there to help you as a project manager or a program manager to really understand say, well, you know, why are we doing this? A lot of times you do projects or programs in your company and, and you really don't have a clue as to why you're doing the project. How does that project tie into the strategic objective of the company? Is it tied into making money? Are you doing this project because your boss said to do it? Well, how does it tie in? The second thing is, it really helps you to identify the gap between today and the future. So if you roll this in today, what value does it bring to you as an organization into the future? And, and the third thing is, it, it strategic plan really make you refocus. Refocus on effort, refocus how you're looking at the business, refocus how you're using staff, refocus how you're using assets of the company. The fourth thing is, if you're doing real 
detailed, structured strategic planning. It helps your management team, your sponsor, your, 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 all the people that's on the steering committee. Everybody's working with you. When you have an understanding as a project or program manager how to deal with strategic planning, you now become bilingual. Bilingual anyway. Because what I mean by being bilingual means that you understand the project side of the business, but you also need to understand the business side of the business. You need to be able to talk to both organi both sides of the house. Number five, it helps the management team identify any critical success factors. I want you to write that down, critical success factors. But that's important for you to roll out and understand what those critical success factors are because they are milestones. They are, they are critical to you understanding how successful you are as you walk through the process. Let's look at the five. Help management uh, share tools to help guide you, help you to understand how do I deal with measurable deliverables how do we make that work? Because you cannot deal with project and program in the world we live in today and, and run the project like foo-foo. You take foo-foo to the bank. You measure foo-foo. So you need to focus on measurable deliverables. Very critical, measurable deliverables. So I want everybody to raise your hand wherever you are right now. Raise your right hand. All right, hands up. And say the word measure. Measurable deliverables. Now, what you did, you swore that you're going to do measurable delivery when you raise your right hand. Because you just said, I will, I do. Okay? Take that down. Let's look at the seven. Manage team to, you know, really understand and reassess opportunities for the business. Is this a good opportunity for our business? Is this going to help us grow? Is it going to drive revenue? Is it going to drive profit? Is it going to drive productivity? It's got to drive something. Because you have to be in a position to help the company with your project or program move the dial. Move the dial. If your project is not having to move the dial, kill it. You're wasting your company money, project managers. It encourages discipline. 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 You need to have discipline in order to drive consistency in delivering value for your company. Number nine, key word here, excellent. It's an excellent way to check the reality, have a reality check. Is this real? Have I forecasted properly? Did I look at all the pieces to really understand, you know, can I do a reality check? I'm third way through the project or program. Is it really working based on the commitment we made in the business case when we did it up front? If it's not, you need to go back and revisit. Number 10, is it proven efficient and effective from an economic standpoint? If you're not on track to deliver value that your company can take to the bank, if you're not getting economic value of some kind, and you're spending a million dollars, five million dollars, whatever your project or program is, is spending, you have to double check yourself. So what I'm saying to you, project manager, who have now become a little CEO, you have to look at the 10 reasons why you need to be focused on strategic planning. I believe you on this call are used to focus on just the project document. Oh, I got to have a project charter. I need a project schedule. Oh, I need all these things. I mean, it's all well. But I don't know. You're not in the 90s. You're in a new century right now. Time to change. The economic landscape of our country has changed. You have to run projects and programs like a small business. You got to make sure they're going to deliver some money, some value to the company. You can't just say, I, I, you know, I brought it in under the budget, and I, I, I brought it in ahead of schedules. And when I hear people say that now, I'm the project manager. I say, hey, whoopie do. You know that. Project managers, you got to begin to operate and think like little CEOs. You're the chief executive officer for that project. You're using the company's assets, people, equipment, money. It is not free. My mother used to tell me all the time, she said, money don't grow on trees. You know, I hate that. She don't want to give me no money. But if money don't grow on trees. 
your company is using cash from somewhere, either out of profit or borrowed the money. You're better stood of that money. You need to understand the 10 reasons why strategic planning is absolutely critical to you as a little CEO. Let's move on. I'll get there, Frank. How do I walk up this ladder? How do I step up to the plate and be accountable? How do I step up to the plate and be you know, responsible for driving this project or this program? Number one, top of the list, not 1A, 1. You must show and demonstrate as a leader a sense of urgency. I talk about that here at PQC. Some of folks are getting it. Some are drinking bad Kool-Aid. Some, because some of them ain't getting it. you got to have a sense of urgency. Because you don't, you're not going to move the dial. Second thing is form a powerful, powerful guiding coalition. Where am I going? What's my vision? Because that coalition drives you right and creates a vision to make sure you understand what you have and what you're doing. Then talk about how do I communicate this vision to my project team and to my leadership in the company. The next step is, after you communicate the vision, how do I empower others to act on that vision? you got a process in place to make people feel good about acting on the vision and like they're not going to be beat up if, if they make a mistake. The other piece is you have to plan for and create short-term wins. Don't try to have wins that are six months out. You know, I mean, that's far out. If you celebrate on a weekly basis or a weekly basis or once a month, do something that you can celebrate on a short-term basis with your project team. Tolerate improvements. And what I'm about here is it's critical to understand what are the best practices, what are the lessons learned as you walk through the project. Don't wait till the end of the project and say, oh, hey, everybody, come on back in. We need to do lesson learned. Too late. Too late. One, they forgot what they did. Number two, they're probably going on to another assignment. You need to work on building this improvement throughout the life cycle of the project. And number eight is now you institutionalize these new approaches. What I mean by, remember, lesson learned converts into best practices. Lesson learned converts into best practices. And so if you follow these steps, you're really going to help yourself, your team, and your company to become more value-added. So many of you on call right now listen and talk about strategic planning You say, it's not something that we used to do. Well, you're right. But this is something that you need to do. For those of you on the call, you need to take this message back to your organization. Take it to your company. Because project managers now have to step up to the plate, guys. We can no longer sit back and worry about the schedule and worry about the project charter and those kinds of things. Those things are okay, but they don't help you move the dial. Strategic plan will. So how do you look at some activities? And you can think about some things and brace on pitfalls that you you need to try to avoid. Because strategic planning is there to help you look at that. You know, get into a situation where you are conducting a jazz session. Get into a situation where you brainstorm, look for ideas. Go to the whiteboard. Use post-it notes. Try ideas and say, how do we avoid pitfalls for this project? Because, ladies and gentlemen, if you run a million dollar project or a five million dollar project, it is going to cost you to make mistakes. It could cost you, it could cost some people their jobs. This is not something you want to take lightly. You went through it and pretty much understand where you're going. So what are 10 pitfalls to avoid as we do it? Do not delegate strategic plan. Project manager, if you're the leader, you are responsible. Do not become engrossed in all kinds of current problems and, and, and looking at all this insufficiency time and all that. Focus on the long run. For the long run, how do we make this project work? Do not fail to develop a company plan or goals. Look for the long-term plan, the life of the project. If it's a year, two years, whatever it can be. Look and say, what is the end supposed to look like? Number four, do not fail to assume their environment. Do not assume. Do not assume. Okay? Assumptions are good as long as you can manage the risk associated with the assumptions. Do not have to use plans as described because you can manage performance. How do I deliver value to this thing? What makes it work out? Let's look at number six. You don't, do not fail to create in a company a client that is resistant to plan because 
if your people are resisting the planning, you got a bigger problem. Because if they resist the strategic planning, guess what? They have already been resistant to doing project planning. That means that they are, are shooting from the hill. That means they're guessing. That means they, they have no consistent thought process in what they're doing. Number seven, do not assume corporate comprehensive plan is already in place. You may need to go find out about your company or your department or your division strategic plan. Because, again, you need to make sure you're linked into that. You need to make sure that you're driving your program, your project, to meet the needs of those of that organization. Do you have so much formality? Don't get high, tied up in, in a whole bunch of processes where you start you get in a situation where you say, oh, my God, you know, we have so much processes that I can't get my work done. Dad, processes are good, templates are good, but don't overdo it. I don't run the business. Do not fail to review with the departments or function managers what are their long-term plans. If you're out of sync with your client, if you're out of sync with your organization, you're out in the wilderness for 40 years. You'll never, ever get this thing done and meet the needs of the business. Number 10, do not consistently reject formal planning mechanisms. You still need to have a formal planning process in place, but don't make it so hard and so stubborn that you're killing people in order to get the work done. Okay. Ten pitfalls you need to try to avoid when we talk about strategic planning. Three perspectives we need to talk about. These perspectives are very, very important to the project manager. These are things to learn about. We're going to talk about core strategy, business strategy, and functional strategy. These are three perspectives that you need to understand for strategic planning. Every project manager, little CEO. So let's take a look at each one of them real quick. So look at corporate strategy. See, this is when you sit back and you say, I, I really need to focus on the whole ball, the whole life cycle of this project. I need to be able to see the end before I begin. I need to be able to understand what's going on before I begin. So pretty man need to fit the pieces together and tie back into the corporate vision. But if you don't do that and you don't know what the end looks like before you start, then you don't know where you're going, you don't know what roadmap you should be on, you don't even know how to get there. So that's very important to be able to do that. The second one is business strategy. What about business strategy? I'm going to look at the financial performance of what I'm doing. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the project, if I didn't deliver financial performance that added value to our company, then I'm, I'm really not there to do what I'm supposed to be doing. Because the investment equals the total cost of ownership. And by total cost of ownership, a lot of when people buy a car, let me use it as an example. People say, wow, you know, I love my car payments. I hate those car payments. I say, whoa, whoa, whoa. What about the gas? What about the maintenance? What about insurance? All the things that that above your car payment makes up the, the, the total cost of ownership. See, even with your project, you need to look at what are the total costs of ownership. What's the total, when I talk about TVO, the total value of ownership. So, okay, I own this car, but what's the total value of ownership? Is it worth owning it? Or when it's time to trade it in, at the end of the life cycle of the project, is it going to be worth anything? Because a lot of time I've seen projects go through a year, time is done with, no value. Okay. We've all seen hardware being made. If it takes too long to make the hardware add value, by the time it's on the marketplace, clients say, ah, and they it's all the time. So what's the total value of ownership? The third is functional strategy. Consider all those functional requirements. Know the business you're in. Know the business you're in. Because if you don't understand what the functional requirements are that make this thing work, then you really have a big problem. Because you're building something that somebody somewhere is not going to be able to use. What are the functional requirements? Have you done your homework? Have you done enough work to understand? what those are. Because again, we're talking about the three perspectives. Corporate, 
right? Business and functional. Got to answer the question on those. With implementation, a project manager is good at implementation. They they have to identify the overall objectives. They have to formulate a very specific plan. That plan could be your project plan. They they that they have to do resource allocation because we all know in many cases. Many of you on this call today are operating in a matrix organization. And, and what I mean by that is you probably don't have those people to report to you on a day-to-day -day basis. You are borrowing resources from other departments, other divisions. You're borrowing people that may be outside contractors to work, but they're not your people. You're responsible for managing them while they work on your project. So resource allocation and budgets are very important thing is monitoring control procedures. If you don't have a change control process in place, a change control system in place, Murphy will visit you. Murphy will bring his whole family to bring chaos into your organization, into your project. So these are four elements that you need to consider as part of rolling out and thinking about implementation. It is absolutely critical that you understand these four and be able to deal with them throughout the life cycle of your project because change is the only thing I can promise you that's going to happen throughout the life cycle. So talk about strategy perspectives measured by the balance scorecard. There are four components of the balance scorecard. Guys, we're talking about strategic planning from a management perspective. We're still talking about strategic planning. I need you to write down. Find customer, internal, learning and growth. These are four perspectives that we're going to talk about in reference to strategic planning for project managers. This is the first one. And talk about some of these before on previous webinars. Talk about financial, I'm talking about return on investment, I'm talking about earned value. I talk about sales growth, cost reduction, economic value added. I'm talking about initial rate of return. I'm talking about all those financial pieces that you need to make sure are in place to justify spending your company's money, to justify you bringing value at the end of your project. These are important because at the end of the day, somebody's going to look at you and say, what value did you bring? And the value, they're not talking about emotional value. They're not talking about subjective value. They're talking about objective value. Objective value is something that you can measure, something that you can take to the bank, something your company can use to expand the business. You've got to begin to look at that and say, what is that and how do I deal with it? The second look at your customer. You know, you always hear that the customer is always right, whether it's internal customer or your external customer. You make sure the customer is satisfied. If the customer is not satisfied, whether it's internal or external, they will not come back. You will not have good customer retention. You will not have any customer loyalty. They talk about you like a dog. They will say all kinds of bad things about you. They will tell 10 other companies, 10 other departments, don't even work with those folks. They cannot meet my needs. It you a lot acquiring new customers to provide your internal or external services to. Customer is king. Customer is king. Customer is king. And you need to learn how to take care of them because without a relationship with them, without building a relationship with that customer, that customer will not be satisfied. That customer will not stay with you that customer will not develop long-term loyalty with you, and that customer will not refer you to other areas of your company or other areas of outside your company. It's important that you focus on the customer. And you know what? I told you on the call today to make sure that you understand who your customers are. A lot of times, we don't even know who our customers are inside our companies. So we're doing this project for somebody. But who's our customer? Sometimes we don't even know. I challenge you on the call right now. 
Let's look at the third one. The third internal perspective. The turnover on my project. Do people leave my project for whatever reason before it's, it's over with? That's a problem. Okay? The other thing I'm going to talk about is training and development. Am I doing things that will help build competencies in my project team? You say, Frank, they're not my people. I understand you operate in a matrix environment. Some may be operating in a weak matrix environment. Some of you may be operating in a strong matrix, but they're still your people throughout the life cycle of this project. You are responsible for developing competence in them to make them more valuable to your project so they can be more efficient and guide through what you're trying to accomplish with this project. If they fail, what? I'm going to tell you a secret. You fail. So it's your responsibility to make sure they develop competency to deliver value in your project over the life cycle. Now, learn and grow. You remember we talked about the customer? Customer is king. I always say your staff and your team members are queen. Here's what I mean by that. They are the ones that you need to make sure that they're satisfied also. Because an unhappy set of staff members are going to be not good producers. They're not going to stay with you. They're not going to stay around and want to work for you. And next time you have a project, being in a matrix environment, they go on the next time you show up as a project manager. You didn't treat them right. Improbability, management satisfaction, all these things are part of learning and growth. Perspective is absolutely critical in looking at what you're doing. You got to begin to say, how do I make this happen for my team member? Even though they don't report to me, even though they're with me for some period of time, which is the life cycle of my project, it's critical that you look at how you make that happen. So let's look at four strategies that operate on all projects. There are strategies that operate on all projects, and we know the first one is cost. We have a time today where cost is very important. To our companies. Companies are cutting people, companies are cutting budgets, companies are making cuts all across the board because they're trying to hold on to their cash. They try to do things for the future. So they're cutting, they're outsourcing, they do all kinds of things to control costs. So we know that's a big one. The second one is say, I want to do it for the lowest cost and highest quality. Now, don't call. You know those two don't go together. You can't always have low cost and quality. You cannot go out and say, I want to buy a Ferrari, but I got a Volkswagen budget. It work. So you need to understand the balance between those two. The third strategy is competition. There's competition inside your company. There's competition on the side, external side of your company. Let me give you an example. There are companies out there today, there are companies out there today that says that if my internal staff cannot meet my needs, I will go outside and get help to do my project. What's going on? Because of how they are focused, they tell you to go on and tell them what your cost is to do the project. They go outside and ask a consultant firm what your cost to do my project and compare. If a consultant firm can deliver greater value, some at a little bit higher cost than you, they go with an outside consultant firm, which leave your people in limbo. Leave your people on the bench with no work to do. You've got to begin to understand there's competition for what you're doing with external and internal to your organization. Fourth one is technology. We know today that technology moves so fast, you wake up tomorrow morning, there's a new gizmo on the marketplace. Things are changing fast. You know, I, when I got my iPad, I was so excited. I saw jumping up and shouting and all that. And then all of a sudden, six months later, they say, we're going to have the new iPad. I got mad. They didn't slow it down. I just finished, I just paid for this thing, and all of a sudden, they talk about a new iPad. You know, but you got Retina, all the other features on it. Well, gee whiz, you know, I got mad. I, I got mad. I wanted to walk to the Apple store, but it wouldn't help me because they weren't going to give me another anyway. So technology is moving fast. And you begin to look at this because, you know, you know, I, I, I still have a BlackBerry. And folks say when you got a BlackBerry, they know that you're an old person. You have a, a smartphone or something like that, you know. 
A lot of my young folks got these smartphones. I don't know how to use that. But I know how to use my old reliable Blackberry. My Blackberry and I still hanging out together. You walk around with these smartphones, technology moving so fast, I don't have a clue what they're doing. You know, they be hacking into something. I don't know. But my Blackberry and I, we, we just still love it. Just hang my hip and we go, go everywhere together. You know? So it, I feel like I'm dating my Blackberry. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so let's look at this. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm heading toward the close here. You know, you know, sometimes I tell people I have to do four closes. Uh, this is my second close. Five days to develop a strategy. Listen to me carefully, project managers on the call. I need you to pay close, close attention to this. All right? So the first thing I want to talk about is vision. What is vision for your project? He said, Frank, but I'm not running a business. I said, you're wrong. You are running a business. If you're running a project in your company, you are running a small business inside your corporation. You're a little CEO. And once you're on webinar in 2012 and forever, ever, ever, you're going to hear me preaching about you are a little CEO. You are running a small business in your department or your company or your division, wherever you are. So lock it in your brain. You are and you should have a vision for that project or program. It needs to focus on specific goals and targets. It needs to make sure they got clear objectives. So let's talk and take a look at what do this look like as we walk through it. Vision is a description of what the organization or project will look like in the future. Look, this is what I said. A description of what it will look like in the future. See, you've got to begin to see the end before you begin. If you don't have a vision for that project, that project it's going to go wherever it want to go. Not where you want to go. If you don't have a vision for your personal life, then you're going to wander in the wilderness. You're going to bounce around from job to job, company to company, department to department, and you're going to wonder why when it's time for you to retire, you say, what have I done? There ain't nothing. You ain't around. You had no focus. You had no vision. Okay? Where no vision, the problem will perish. Go down the Mind. You got a vision. Second one. I deal with that. But first, you need to understand the vision concept. What do you mean by a vision? All right? How do I look at this? Second step is examine core values. What values that your company has. What are the values that your company is living by? Three. I find the business or industry trends because you may be building a technology, you may be building a software, you may be building whatever. What the trends? And about what you're doing. Because if you're working on something you know, with a dying trend, guess what? At the end, when you get it done, all messed up. I remember reading an article about it was either Cisco or Nortel. It was building these set of routers. And the time they had so many old runs on it, and it took longer than they planned to do it. By the time they got these things out to the marketplace, and they start trying to sell them to the company, the company said, oh, no, I can't do that. That's out of date. And so millions and millions of dollars are tied up in these things sitting in a warehouse somewhere. Okay. All right? You didn't understand what was going on within the trends. Step four, develop a trend response. What do you think as you go to the road and the trend begin to change in you and develop this thing? You need to decide, do I kill it or do I change my, my with the direction to create something that gives us an upward trend? You sit back and you're prepared to write your vision statement. Stay Two sentences. Prefer one sentence. Vision statement. Because your vision should be something that your team member can memorize and walk through the hallway, in the lunchroom, out in the courtyard, at the mall, walk into Walmart. Some people call it Walmart. But walk into Walmart and be able to tell you what the vision is. It's going to be simple, clear, and crisp. So let's take a look. The second thing is the mission statement. Vision of purpose. See, we already talked about the vision. The vision what does the future look like? The purpose said, the, the mission statement is what's the purpose? Okay. What are we doing this? Spell out your goal. What, what path are we going to go? Are we going to go southbound 75? Or are we going to go eastbound on our 20? Okay. Where, where am I going with this thing? You got to have a path. You got to have a, a roadmap as to where I'm going with this. 
better decision. Let's look at the next one. So, the step to develop a mission statement. I'm going to hit this real quick. First, start and state the nature of the business. Why am I doing this project? I did your customers. Look at the service your project will be delivering. Look at quality and pricing schemes you got here. What, what organization fit is going to do when I'm done with it? Do I have a specific relationship with my team members? With any relationships, you have a problem with your people. What does it require? What are the core competencies that I need to make sure that I have and that my team members have? These are the things that you must put in place to make your vision. Why? Because remember, mission is about purpose, about where you're going, where the roadmap you're going. You have these things in place. And then you look at each step, we try taking a short period of time to write a short paragraph about your mission statement. Real short. Sure. So what I'm talking about here is not stuff that take you a long time to do. I'm talking about strategic planning for project managers. The one is goals and targets. Goals and targets are small chunks of work that need to be done. Sometimes uh, you hear me talking about sprints. Some people talk about having a sprint. A sprint can be defined as a week of delivery or two weeks of delivery. Why do I talk about sprint? Why do I talk about doing work in chunks? I like doing work in chunks. Chunks of work, chunks of work, chunks of work. Because if my chunk don't work, guess what? I can fix it before I start doing a whole lot of stuff that may get messed up. Okay? Now you write this down. Because if you fail to do chunks, guess what I say? You all messed up. What the book about? I'm all messed up. Alright? I'm all messed up. Sometimes I think I'm all messed up. But keep on driving forward. You're going to have goals and targets. And they need to be very specific and measurable. So how do you do this? Because we all, every January, people have goals after goals. If I want to lose weight in January, so that's my New Year's resolution. I lose weight. And everybody will join up with Jenny Craig and LA Fitness and Lifetime Fitness and the membership goes up. Everybody, I mean, folks, folks all sizes, little people, thin people, fat people, everybody want to have a goal, right? But the goal is not real because you know why I know it's not real? Because we bought the membership in January, in February, LA Fitness and Jenny Craig didn't see them no more. But they paid for the membership. They felt good because they had a New Year's resolution. That's the type of goal I'm talking about. So you need to understand Goals in your target application. So you've got to prepare a goal statement. Then view those preliminary goals. What are those goals? How do they fit into the organization? i got to communicate those goals because I need what? I need my team members to embrace those goals. I can't deliver those goals by myself. I need my team members. I need everybody to step up to the plate. I need people with good competencies and good core competencies that's going to jump in here and help agree and be committed. Write this down. In order for your team to be successful, you need their permission and their participation. I'm going to say that again because I think some of y'all out there are missing this. In order for your team to be successful, even in a matrix organization, you as a project manager or program manager, as a leader, you need their permission and their participation. It's absolutely critical that you have that in order to make your goals become a reality. Phase four. The objectives are called things that drive the day-to-day -day activities. They are there to link to and support your goals. They are, they are the people that's on track, running around track to make things happen for you. Objectives drive what you're doing. They are the pillars that sit with your goals. Because without those pillars, your goals will collapse. They will fail. You will fail. Your team will fail. You gotta look at what what are the objectives? What what, what are we gonna do to drive the direction to get on this on this path we are on? And then then back to understand the object concept. Deliver and, and develop and sit back and say, you know what? What are some of those preliminary objectives? What are some of the things I need to really be successful? What are those things? Then I make sure that I get my leadership, my sponsor, and others 
to now approve my organization objectives. Because why? I need to make sure my objectives are tied back to the company, back to the department, back to the vision of the company. If not, then I'm working in foo foo land. Okay? Number five, form the strategy and implement the plan. Form the strategy and implement the plan. You got to get into the execution mode. So, how do I do that? I understand the strategy concept. I need to build a preliminary strategy, get buy in from my project sponsor, get buy in from all the folks that will be my project stakeholders. Okay? Stop here. Because many, many years you heard me talk about the value of your project stakeholders. All right, now I'm going to take you back. Right now, your stakeholders defined as anyone has a vested interest in the outcome of your project or program deliverables. Anyone that has a vested interest in the outcome of your program or project deliverables. Who are these people? The project sponsors, the project manager, the team members, your customers, your end users, anybody that has a vested interest in the outcome of the deliverables. Got to make sure they are tied into the strategic plan. They are tied into the strategy. But if not, your city in step three will not get approved. You be messed up. I told you in the book, because all messed up. All that will go down the tube. So I look at this whole thing. I need to make sure my team is prepared to participate. Remember I said you need their participation and permission. But Frank, I'm the leader. You're nothing without your team. You're nothing without the people around you. You need their permission and their participation. Don't get the big head. Okay? You need to align your thinking in a way that they are with you. You need to communicate your strategy where they're with you, where they can buy into it. That they because they participated in that thing. You gotta make sure they're part of the whole process. How about the preliminary strategy? Let me hit this real quick. Here's the thing that's on this one slide. The word influence. How are you able to influence the people on your team? You're in a matrix organization. Because if you're not a good influencer, you better be good at begging. Bribing. You're not a good briber. If you, if you don't know how to beg good, you better be a good influencer. Because you, you got to go from department to department. You got to beg a long day ahead of you every day of work. You find yourself going to work on Saturdays and on Sunday after church. Time may get so hard on you, you can't even go to church on Sunday. You got to be at work on Sunday. Your pastor's trying to look for you, find out where you've been. Pastor at work. Seven days a week. Why? Because I don't know how to influence my team. He's a good influencer. Well, learn how to beg. If you don't know how to beg, you better, you better start bribing. Not a thing, but you better start bribing. Are like you with me here? Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about out there. All right? Be influence. Step three. Remember I just talked about stakeholders? All right? The three stakeholders are most important to you. Because of the ones you're going to sit back with in a brainstorming session called a JAD, Joint Application Design, which is a facilitated process for gathering requirements from project stakeholders. Those are the people that have a vested interest in the outcome of your project or program are the ones that you want to be loving on, the ones that you want to get the requirements from, because they are your target audience. You want to work with them and make sure you're clear. Clear. Now, what I'm doing today, and I want you to listen to me as I close. And I think this is my final close. I think. Since I got the mic, let me make my, my last close. I should understand something. I'm a mission. A mission, you know, my business card says I'm a project management evangelist. I'm on a mission worldwide. I may be crazy. I may be wacky. I may be all off the chain. But I'm serious. I'm on a mission to change the world about how we do project management. 
We do not do project names like we've done in the past. We do not add value to the companies that we work for, that pay your salary and provide you with benefits. You do not do things like you used to do them. You have to step up to the plate and become a little CEO. Strategic planning is a tool in the CEO toolbox. I'm going to spend the rest of my days on earth trying to get this chain. Every webinar you attend, I may be talking about personal development or whatever, but it's all about getting you to change your mind, to have a different mindset about how to drive the business that you work for, the business that you are driving. Somebody somewhere in some company is trusting you to good steward, trust you somehow with, their, with the company's money, the company's equipment, the company's people, and you got to step up to the plate. You can be a good steward. Come on and be a CEO. Come on and, and step up and be, the, be it. You got to think different. So I close, I want to make sure that you understand that I'm going I'm to be on you. You see me in the mall, I'm going I'm to I'm give you the same message. If I don't let me see you in the airport, I'm going to stop you in the airport, I'm going to give you the same message. If I see a restaurant with your, with your families and stuff, I'm coming over to your table and I'm going to start talking to your kids and your spouse about the same principles. I'm going to say, I'm going to get kids on it. I'm going to say, get mom and dad to step up to the plate. I'm going to tell you. So come on, guys. Are you with me here? Got to begin to do this. Now, as always, I want to share a couple of resources with you. I want you to go get, get on Amazon after this call. I don't know stock in Amazon, so I ain't getting no money. All right? The folks I want you to go buy, buy them used books. You know, I get, I get beat up by my controller because I'm trying to find a, a book for, for a dollar, on a, but it's three ninety nine to ship it to me. You know, so she beat me up. You spent a dollar, and but you spent three ninety nine to the book ship. I said, well, I bought the book new for twenty seven dollars. Now you can complain about that. So you know, I have to have a little conversation with controllers. So sometimes you want to beat me up, all right? So here are three books, all right. Hopefully you can go back and get these. But the one on ten steps to successful strategic plan. Is an outstanding book. The, the companion to it is strategic planning, what every manager must know. Some of the things I just talked about. Third one is how you work with your people, how you work with the team, how you facilitate and guide the process of strategic planning. These are three great resources that I use personally in my library. I am a book nut. You don't come behind me and use one of my books, they are highlighted in, in pink. Red, yellow, got check mark in them, got stickies in them. You don't do that. So with that, guys, it's been fun. I've enjoyed this. But just understand, this is absolutely critical that you begin to focus on strategic planning. I thank you for attending this webinar. I look forward to seeing you on other webinars. I look forward to harassing you on other webinars. It's always an honor to harass you because I'm doing it for your development and for my enjoyment. Thank you much. And I'll turn this over to the panel and let them begin to talk to you. Again, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Frank, for this very informative session. Uh, we are now going to open the Q&A session. But before that, I'd like to address a concern um, that just came up. Tammy, this is in response to your question. So we will be sending out the PDO certificate within the next 48 hours. Um, and you will be hearing from us shortly. Um, and now I'd like to open. Uh, the discussion to our panelists and would like you to briefly introduce yourself and then take the questions that have been typed in the box as we um, attended the session. Corbin, would you like to start? Sure. Uh, this is Corbin Hicks. I'm one of the project managers here at PQC. Uh, one of the questions we received was, how do you steer a project back on track if you start the project and there was no strategic planning? So if you are kind of bringing, brought onto a project you're still in the planning phase, but there wasn't any strategic planning, you need to take a step back and make sure you address those those items. Uh, Frank mentioned a couple of times that you need everyone's permission and participation, and the best way to get their permission and participation is by making sure that you all agree on the goals, agree on the strategy, agree on the mission, agree on what you're trying to accomplish. And once you take a step back and you make sure that everyone is on the same accord, make sure everyone is uh, 
agreeing on what the project is going to be accomplishing, then you can move forward with the rest of your planning. You never want to move forward without everyone's buy-in, and if there's someone that does object to your buy-in, then you want to figure out where they're coming from to just try to uh, address that and try to move, move forward. Thank you, Corbin. Uh, Dana, would you like to take the next question and introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. My name is Dana Bernard. I am the Chief Strategy Officer with PQC International. Um, really enjoyed this uh, webinar today as it's right up my alley. And um, one of the questions I have is, are there any default critical success factors that should be used across all projects? And, um, you know, typically you'll find that people use the triple constraint, which is scope, budget, and time. Well, specifically, Frank mentioned earlier in the webinar that um, if, if you meet those, then that's great, that's dandy, it's wonderful, but what do you do, what value do you add? So while those are good places to start, there are other things to consider. And I uh, just wanted to bring you guys' attention to um, a report that was published in March of 2012 that was released by PMI, and it's the po uh, Pulse of the Professional Survey. And it talked about this year um, critical success factors for project, program, and portfolio management being um, staffing, realistic planning, top-level support, uh, defining benefits, and also managing change. So if I could give a one line about each one of these, Staffing, make sure that you're staffing your project team with the appropriately skilled people. They'll be, I mean, critical to success of your project. Realistic planning, we've gone over this over and over again on this webinar. Take the time to create a realistic implementation plan. If you don't plan from the beginning, you're just setting yourself up for failure. Um, have top level support. Um, in this report, it talked about organizations that have active sponsors um, or at least 75% of their projects have 74% uh, success rate versus 63% uh, success rate for those who did not have an active sponsor. Um, define your benefits. You know, don't do the project just for project's sake. Know that you're going to have some measurable results coming out of it. Everybody swore that they'll have measurable results and define, um, have, and know your benefits and make sure your team also knows those benefits. And then manage your change very effectively. You want to manage all changes, risk associated with your project. Um, it will save you a lot of time, your team a lot of time, and it will keep that open dialogue with your client and make you the most successful project manager. So that's it for that question. Thank you, Dino. Would you like to take the next question? All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Tim Shove. I'm Chief Technology Officer here at PQC International. And the question we see was more of a, uh, I guess, a uh, frustration or personal question is, is with, with us working as a project manager with limited people and resources get the time to do this advanced planning to, to develop a strategic plan. And so the answer is going to be one that we had to chew a few years ago is, is basically by um, project man has to take the lead, right? You sort of have milestones along the way, how far you want to progress as you're doing the plan. And then you can assign out parts to teams or to groups. You want to bring it, you know, then meet regular and bring it back. So it's a part of progressive elaboration, sort of going back and forth. And you're running this as pretty much as running concurrently at the same time that you're doing planning. And it may also even enter into some of the early on execution part of your project. So it's going to be an ongoing project uh, process, rather. And as long as, you you know, your management, they're not going to be upset that you're actually going back to try to drive more value and being able to, articulate what this project is going to bring to the organization. So they're going to be supportive of that part because now you're speaking that language anyway. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Dana and Corbin. Um, those are wonderful inputs. Thanks for sharing them. I'm confident everybody enjoyed the session as much as I did. So before we close for the day, I would like to ask you to please take the automatic survey that pops up at the end of the session. Um, and like I said earlier, we will be sending up a follow-up email to you tomorrow with a PDO certificate and also a link to this recorded webinar. Um,
just want to let you know that we have our next webinar on uh, it's on August 8th, and it is the 360 Degrees of Influence. Be sure to attend, and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.